This week on Brew Pig, I check the main engine oil galleries for diesel. Burke unleashes the claw. We do some kindergarten painting. Burke tries to steal a glass of water. And I show a little bit of leg. Brew Pig was a sunken fishing trawler that's been brought back to life with the help of volunteers and funded by our Patreons, community, and supporters. She'll be crewed by passionate people from around the world. If you'd like to be involved and support the project, please consider joining us on Patreon or subscribe to the channel on YouTube. This week, we're getting the exhaust done. You might want to come down half a minute. Oh, sorry. Five more. Stop. That's already it. A bit too much, but it's fine. It's alright. I don't have a measurement for that exactly. We're not doing this with a dial gauge. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we weren't there. Stop. Can you measure that and I'll do a front one as well? That's 11. Okay, and what's that? 10. Okay. Oh, really? So you go with that? I think so. Yeah, alright. Now we need to figure out how we're going to do this bend over here. So what the plan is, is basically join these two together. We're going to just transfer that straight across. We're going to use some tape as a way to transfer, um, you know, the lines around on pipe. And then we're going to start tigging these together. Now you can sort of see if you look down that pipe, we have to join this guy here with that guy there. So at the moment, everything's obviously offset off to one side. But um, once we're able to tig this on, we're going to then start be able to line it up with that exhaust pipe at the back end of the boat. So with tape around the pipe itself, we can transfer that blue, the bottom of that blue line ends up being the bottom of that pipe on the side there. So I'm just going to cut it and see how far out we are. Right, time to start trimming this up. So the plan is get this guy here welded in. Obviously it's off to one side, we have to adjust it across and then join this pipe with this pipe here. But one of the things that we realized was this long section here and then this curved section with the um, flex coupling in it as well. By welding this whole thing together, we're gonna create one massive pipe. So we're gonna put a join in the middle so that if we ever have to pull this apart for whatever reason, we're dealing with multiple small pieces of exhaust rather than one great big huge 50 kg lump of pipe. So we need to get another slip um, joint. So those big stainless flanges there, they're actually from water pipes. We're gonna grab another two of those. Jess is gonna go into town and grab two of those. And we're gonna put another one, like or another flange joint up here with two of those water flange mounts. And then we're gonna join the pipe, um, the straight pipe coming along into this guy here. So a um, wee bit of work, but it'll make it simpler down the road if we ever have to modify anything or change anything on this exhaust. This is the rig we've got holding everything together. So we've got a piece of wood clamped to the top of the original exhaust. The original exhaust is bolted with a gasket to the flange. That's supporting the top of the flex joint, which is also supporting the very front joint here that we need to tack together. So we're gonna tack it in place where it is right now, and then we'll take everything off and we'll weld it out on the bench. That's done. Now that we've got that tacked together, we can start working on the straight that goes between the two of them. So I just had a bunch of phone calls back and forth with Jess. She's at the shop now that sells the flanges that we want to put up here for our joint. Um, however, the flanges that we need are five inch water flanges, which happen to be roughly, well, not quite six inch um, outside diameter or inside diameter on the flange, outside diameter on the pipe. And we need to get the machined out. So that's gonna be another delay. We can buy the flange, but we can't get the machine for a couple of days. So um, this job's going on hold. So I'll show you what we're up to. We've got the exhaust uh, straight is cut. It fits in the gap up there, but we can't do anything until we got the flange. So. We're going to just leave everything sitting there. What I do want to do is add another mount up here to take the weight off the turbo. I want to add a mount in here somewhere. Um, but all of that's on hold until we can get this flange. Uh, so we're going to start with something else. Probably going to start on starter motor. Because obviously that's the next logical step to take. So the next part in the engine alignment chock fast exhaust building series is obviously cleaning the starter motor. This is our starter motor. It's off the, the rebuilt engine, the original motor off that rebuilt engine. We're going to use this rather than a brand new one because the plan was always to change the air start. Hence, we never spent any money buying a new electric starter motor. However, the air starter that we have was donated by Ryan McLeod. 
it's an awesome little starter. Um, however, we can't use it because it's slightly the wrong size for this engine and it's not compatible. Basically, we thought it was, um, every indication said it was, but we can't actually use it. So we're back to square one where we have to find a new one. So for now, we're going to be using this electric starter. The microphone stopped recording, so I'm going to be providing voice activated sounds. Here we're bolting it up. Ratchet sounds, ratchet sounds, clickety click, click, ratchet, ratchet, a different bolt, ratchet, 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 still going, ratchet, ratchet, ratchet. It's time for a torque wrench. Here we go. Ready? Voice activated torque wrench. Click, 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 click. Click, click. Oh, one more. Here we go. Oh, click and click. With the starter in and the exhaust tacked together, the next step in chock fasting is putting the steering pump on. This power takeoff on the Cummins has a little plate put over it so that we didn't have oil splashing everywhere when the engine was dyno tested. So that needs to come off. A new gasket needs to be made. And then the hydraulic steering pump fitted to the engine. Time to get you on. Okay. Oh, I got you. Now, with a little bit longer bolts, time to get that together. Some of these bolts behind the fuel pump, behind the steering pump, that sort of thing on the Cummins 855 can be a bit tricky to get to. We often end up having to cut spanners and make special service tools, particularly 716 spanners always seem to cop it. But in this case, Birk was able to get there with a 3.8 ratchet set and a flexi joint. Nice and tight. So we just went and checked the mail. Something's arrived from Amazon. We don't know what it is yet. But there's a thingy doodacky. I've been watching you for some for a while. It's about time I showed some support. It's not much, but every bit count from one Kiwi to another. Enjoy your gift from oh, Tim Fernell. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Gosh, it's beautiful. Alright, it? what is it? I'm really curious now. <laughs> It's a thing. It's square. No, it's square. It's rattles. It's rattles. It's, it's like Christmas. <gasps> hey! Aww. Oh, it's a it's a pan for our blooming cooker thing that will work. An induction one. Gosh, I love the induction thing. Is it? No. All those who suggested the induction, thank you, thank you. I know it's awesome. Fantastic. I think it's because it's a good one, though. <gasps> oh yeah. That is beautiful. Fantastic. <sighs> Got a handle over here. Somewhere. Didn't we just see these getting made recently on there? Yes, we did. Oh my god, anything? look at look at it. There's <laughs> a flipping cat. That is very cute. Don't oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that looks really good too. Right, you separate the. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, Bert's gonna be so happy with food <laughs> separated. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. It's really thoughtful. Is it okay? Pass the cat inspection. Little cat in there too, look. A cat scan. A cat scan. <laughs> Very good. So what we need to do, we've got the old start cables here, which the starter motor used to be on this side of the engine. With the new engine, it's on the other side. So we need to swap them over the other side of the boat. Um, these are 95 millimeter square cables and they're pretty expensive to buy per meter. So rather than buy new cables that go from the batteries over there all the way over, we're just going to extend these guys across, which is pretty easy to do. Um, we'll get some cabling tomorrow to do this. We just need to cut these off and then measure up how much we need. We're going to make some brackets up here, brackets over here, so that we can have the cables sort of neatly tied into the engine. And then off to the um, starter motor on this side over here. While that's happening, um, I've got a piece of V angle block just um, strapped up. You can see my ratchet straps over here. And this holds this piece of pipe straight, so I'm going to tack this together so that we can get this extension. And then we need to start working on the flanges. There's a flange on either side of this joint to this uh, flex mount over here. Dun de Leon. There's something incredibly satisfying with stainless welding when you've got all the fit up great and everything's, you know, just perfect and you can just smash out a really nice TIG weld. That's not necessarily what happened here, but that's what I'm going to pretend happened. That's welded all the way around, so some of the welds are a bit crikey dick. 
um, but they will do. I don't think I'm going to see any leaks out of any of those. We're going to smoke test this probably, rather than try and do pressure testing of any sort, because that's just too difficult with this type of thing. I don't have any of the equipment to do any pressure testing on it. So what we're going to do is basically assemble this back up, and then we can start working on the next part that goes around the front of this pipe. Slot in there. All right, let's get you done it properly. We need to put the mount on. So time to talk about mounts. We need to have mounts on this exhaust because it's just too heavy and too long. And if we let it just sort of sag and so it's going to start breaking and cracking welds and things like that. So you have to brace it every so often. Roughly, in this case, it's probably braced every maybe 1.2 meters four, four and a half feet, something like that. So we've got this um, three mil wall thickness box that's been cut into like a C section, a small C section. You can sort of see it like that. And what we do is we've got a couple of rubber mounts like this and they hook onto a rib. So the rib itself bolts onto this bit here. So the whole um, weight of the exhaust is actually trying to compress these mounts. It's not pulling on them, it's trying to compress these mounts. And then underneath that, we've got a um, like a big U-bolt that is a six inch U-bolt and it bolts onto this old box section that we used. So we're gonna start putting um, mounts like that along the length of the, uh, the exhaust pipe. And we need to build another one at the far end, but it has to be slightly different because the ones over on this side, uh, basically on this side of the flex joint, on the back end of the exhaust, they have to be rubber mounted. And the ones at the front end of the flex joint have to be solid mounted and it has to be onto the engine only so that it takes the weight off the exhaust flange. So the mount sits pretty much right above the exhaust. Put a bit of anti-seize on them because nobody likes you if you're a mechanic doing jobs on an exhaust after somebody's not put anti-seize on. Okay, one. Two. Right, let's get those nipped up. Click, click. And then the stainless loop, I've already put a little bit of copper coat on it. Actually nickel based anti-seize, but I grew up using copper coat and that's the only thing that seems to have stuck in my brain. Let's get these nuts on. Find that in a bit. So we need to move this whole start box assembly thing that we built a while back. We call it the brunette box because it's basically got everything for the networking of the engine to the bridge on Brewpeg, hence brunette. Nothing to do with Skynet, totally different. So what we're thinking is originally it used to be long and narrow, so it was 400 deep, 300 wide, uh, but it doesn't fit with this in the way. So we're thinking of rotating it and doing uh, 300 deep, 400 wide, and then we'll just adjust the switches and the, and the gauges and everything so that they align with the new direction. Yeah, just leave it like that. So it's not opening up, down? Yeah, yeah, let's just bolt it like that. Do you just jiggle that just, just, just a little bit of dust. That's level. I'll go level of the roof. Okay. It's too wrong. Yep. Okay, you right there? That's about the same size, yeah. I'm basically orientating myself on the mount right now. Yep, okay. So it's time to start connecting brew pegs, networked engine control box to the engine. And then this has already got the cabling running up to the bridge. We just need to obviously fasten it back up onto the roof here. But we've swapped it around. So it used to sit that way around, but we're now gonna be modifying the gauges to be that way around just so that it works. So Birk's working on that. I'm working on little bits like this. So collection of parts here and they go into our uh, crossover pipe from a turbo into our inlet manifold here. So this here is where we're putting our manifold air pressure sensor. So we've got an electric um, sensor as well as an analog sensor. I feel like this is deja vu. I'm about to put the oil sender in the main gallery of this engine and about 12 months ago I went to do exactly the same job on the old engine and that's when diesel came out. Hey, this engine's got no diesel in it. So we have quite a lot of electrics running this engine but we have backups for everything. So there's always a lot of concern about like, you know, what if the electrics fail or what if, you know, power goes down or whatever, you know, some, some variation of a failure scenario. I just want to show you this. 
manual oil gauge, like an old school analog oil gauge. Oil goes in the back, oil pressure reads on the front. So that gets tapped directly into the main oil gallery because if everything else fails, I can at least see if we've got oil pressure on the main engine, we can decide can we run or can we not run. And also it's really good when we're starting because when we're physically starting it, you can just watch that and see oil pressure immediately come up into that main gallery. So it's a great little sort of not, well, it's a great backup, but it's also a really cool thing to have when you're starting the engine is to physically be able to see that happening. The next line for us is uh, um, electric gauge. And this basically tells us um, everything we need to know. So it, so it comes from this main gallery, goes up into the brunette box and then heads off to the various places in the boat. So it heads off to the bridge. It's basically all red in this box and then sent out um, either via ethernet or Nemia, depending on what we're trying to do with it. I can't remember which way this, this gauge sends on, but um, yeah, that's how it gets around the boat. Uh, there's also a completely separate red arc gauge that is in this box here. So if again, if everything else fails, if this engine's still running, the red arc gauges will be able to read what we're doing, provided we've still got a start battery. If that fails again, we've got the manual on the main gallery. Right, progress update. So we've got our red arc gauges up here, which are our primary engine gauges when we're in the engine room. Um, we are starting to hook them up, so we've got our cabling starting to get plugged in. So we've got manifold air pressure sensor going in here. We've got the red arc gauge map sensor, which is basically a boost sensor right there. And then we've got a, an electronic one that sends it up to the brunette system. We've yet to wire in our oil pressure, which is just down there. You can just make it out. We've got our alternator, which we need to swap from the plugs from the old uh, alternator that we had to this new style, which is just going to be terminals extending those. We've yet to do that. Over the back here, we've got, oh, let's spin around and I'll show you. We've got two water sensors. One of them is Red Arc, one of them is Brunette, um, and they basically send data off either to that box or to that box, which then goes upstairs via Ethernet cables. If we follow this here, we've yet to do the wrapping, etc. but this goes all the way down to this sensor here and our keel cooling, which tells us how effective our keel cooling is working at the moment. We've got our two exhaust gas temp uh, probes. I'm struggling with these because I need to get a fitting, a stainless fitting, that I can weld into the exhaust and this one's really causing me grief. I don't quite know where to get that fitting from yet. This one here is pretty straightforward. I can actually just weld that into the exhaust, that stainless fitting there. Um, but I don't have an equivalent on that one, so I need to solve that. One of them is uh, exhaust gas temp for red arc gauges in the engine room and one of them is for the brunette system. Uh, right, exhaust, fully welded. So I need to get that bolted up. Um, that's something that I've yet to do. Um, for now, I've just been mucking around with this, trying to get this a bit more intact. We had to strip out some of the wires. The original starter motor used to be on this side. We've had to strip it out of the loom and push it over to that side. Um, I did go into town this morning and grab some cable extensions for these, like some big bits of cable to extend these and joiners and so on. So we'll be able to get the starter motor hooked up shortly. Time to fit the uh, exhaust. We're gonna bolt it all the way down and through. We're gonna do the flanges and so on. We've got high temp ultra copper magic goo stuff. So we're putting that on all the gaskets. Try and leak now. No, actually don't say that because it will leak. Isn't that pretty?
So a couple of people have mentioned in the last episode about heat management in this exhaust. People saying, well, actually one person commented that we're probably going to die if we come into this engine room because it's going to be too hot. And whilst that hasn't been the case for the last 50 years, I don't really want to start now. So uh, the plan, we're going to be wrapping the whole exhaust, basically similar to what this turbo's got, like a, a variation of this across all of the, the hot parts of the exhaust, so from here all the way down out the engine room. It's going to get quite big because it's going to be fairly, you know, chunky insulation. The other side of it is I want to put a heat shield up the top here. So I'm not sure what. Um, I'd love some advice on this. Maybe aluminium, tin, bit of stainless. I don't really know. I'm, I'm not. I've never built one, so I don't know what material to use. But it's just going to be essentially a shield to try and radiate the heat back into the room as opposed to into the um, floor of the room above the, the saloon. Um, the other thing I want to do, um, and this is down the track, but I want to actually wrap coils of stainless all the way around this here like a walk cooler but around the pipe around around this area here because I want to start taking some of the waste heat out of the exhaust and use it for things around the boat. I won't go into too much detail about that but that's one of the, the ideas I had is essentially water cooling this part of the exhaust to take heat out of the room and put it into some working fluid. So um, yeah you guys got any if you've had experience with anything like that I'd love to hear from you and, and understand a bit more and learn a bit more about it. So exhaust welded um, we may be doing something with this in the future to make a better bend, but that's a long way down the track. That's not a priority at now, but this will be perfectly fine for what we need. This whole area is going to be wrapped, so this, this whole U-bend is going to be wrapped. So it's going to look kind of similar to this, a big puffy blanket type thing over the whole lot. We're going to be using thicker wrap at the front. It's going to be 30 mil thick wool, so it's quite chunky when it's all, you know, strapped onto this. So sensors are in as well. So you can see we've got our sensors in here. It's pretty close to the exhaust but with the wrap we're hoping that it's going to be okay and if I have to build a little deflector I will. Um, next step we've got to get our water so we've got the top hose here and the bottom hose here. We're going to turn this one 90 degrees so it points down. This one we're going to have to build something that comes out and around and whatever. So we've got to get it down to these keel cooling pipes just here. Yeah, have, a look. You have a look on the engine if I come up you can kind of see top radiator hose there, bottom radiator hose there. They all point forward obviously. Normally you'd have a big radiator in the front if this was a generator or what have you. So we've got to move that and modify that, bring them back down to here. There's a wee bit of rust in the bilge because we dumped some water that was a bit crappy and happened to go down there. Uh, starter motor is on. We're about to do the cabling for that. We are making progress on our box. So let me spin around. Okay, bring it box. Our gauges, we've sealed them all up. We want this box to be completely airtight. So we've sealed all of the gauges and everything up. Um, so they're now pointing the right direction because we had to rotate the box 90 degrees so the gauges were all on the side. Still got to do this one here so I'm going to get onto that one now. But then once that's done, that box is pretty much ready to go. You can kind of see how it's going to look when it's finished. Obviously that RPM gauge is the wrong way around. But we're getting close. So this is a moment I've been wanting to do for about 12 months. So things aren't fully wired up but we walk over to here, power up the system. Whoop whoop! Everything comes alive and then everything tells us it's wrong because stuff isn't quite saying it's accurate at the moment, which is fine. Well, apparently we're not overheating, which is always good. So this morning I got an email that uh, the second can of Chockfast is on its way. It's Tuesday right now. Uh, I paid for fast postage. I'm really hoping it gets to us this week. Um, Duncan is here uh, on Monday, so uh, less than a week away now. And my plan is is that I want to get everything ready to go, all the dams made for the chock fast because I'd really love to pour it while he's here. I think he's particularly looking forward to figuring that whole setup out. Same, it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, so that plan is happening for next week, um, and that's why we're pushing pretty hard to basically get all the systems, the exhaust, all of the sensors and so on, because that's that's his baby. He's going to get Bruni up and running so that it starts talking to the bridge so that we can see what the engine's doing whilst we launch, which is very, very close now. Um, I'm not going to give you a date because <laughs> I'm terrible at the dates, so we work our ass off to try and make sure that we make them and then we miss them and we get pounced on in the comments. So I was fitting the oil sender and I tightened it up too much. I obviously put too many horsepowers into the seven millimeter nut that was on there and I snapped one of them off. So um, that's not gonna work. So have another one of these on order. It takes 14 days for them to get here. So we're just gonna leave that one in here and not have the automatic, uh, sorry, the electronic oil pressure sender running for the first few days, I'm guessing. We'll still have this. So we know we've got oil, it's all good. Um, but this one here, that's, that's out for now. So another one of them on order, actually two of them, so that I've got a spare. But the camera ran out of batteries while I was doing it, but I'm starting to extend the battery cables. So you can see old cable, new cable, joiner. These are 95 mil square cables. So we've got a big 
chunky bit of heat shrink. Time to heat shrink these and start extending them over the engine. This resin infused heat shrink has a 3 to 1 shrink ratio. So if you've got say 3 inch diameter, it'll go down to 1 inch diameter. And if you look really close, you might be able to see some clear shiny stuff there. That's the glue. So this stuff has resin glue in it. And you want to heat it until you see that glue come out. And then you know it's basically bonded onto the onto the liner below it. As well as like the joiner over here. So um, yeah, it does take a bucket load of heat though. That that gun was set to 630 degrees Celsius. And it's a, it's a pretty good gun. So it, I'd say it probably is something up around, you know, at least 600 degrees um, to get that stuff to melt really well. So in terms of cable runs and paths, so batteries here, ignore the mess, that's chaos of work. So it goes down under the floor across on a cable tray, there's a cable tray under there. It comes up and I'm thinking I'll run it over the bell housing like that and then forward to the starter motor. Now, the place that I get all my electrical supplies didn't have stainless uh, P-clamps, they only have plastic P-clamps and I don't want to use that plastic is just going to fall apart for this sort of thing so what I'm actually thinking is hydraulic mounts at the back end of Brewpeg's engine room that is one of our hydraulic steering uh, circuits so you've got oil going in one way and out the other way or vice versa depending on how you're pointing the rudder now that mount itself this thing here is a metal and metal with hard plastic in the middle and a bolt in the center there that holds it all I'm actually thinking of something like that. You can get various different size um, mounts, and I'm thinking of, of a few of those. Make a couple of little brackets, and we'll have really um, solid mounting for these cables. I'm not 100% certain if it's the best solution. Uh, it is a solution that some of the electrical guys talked to me about this morning when we were discussing options and things like that. They said that they've seen electricians use that. I don't know if it's good or not in a marine environment with the vibration and everything like that. If the cable sort of, you know, fairly tight and whatever, maybe even put some heat shrink underneath the mount so you've got the heat shrink and then you've got the cable itself to give it a bit more protection I, I don't know um, again would love to get some advice if people have done anything like this or know of any options the trouble is, is that getting parts in Australia can be a bit of a challenge sometimes and as I say I can't physically get a stainless p-clamp that has a plastic coating these are quite cool I really like those but we can't physically get those where we are for now I'm probably gonna have to go with the hydraulics unless somebody has a better idea and we can solve that problem we still need to put in this water inlet for the port side tank. Problem is, that's where it's eventually gonna sit, and I basically have to drill a hole that fits into that, into there, and we want it flush. So I basically have to hold saw that whole thing out. That's just an old fin from way, way before. But I can't. I, I need a center point to put the hole saw in. So what I'm gonna do? Is I'm just grab a piece of flat bar I'm just going to weld it across here that I can drill that and use it as a center point for the hole saw. Partly stainless and partly weld and yeah, wicked. Like the starting point was about another five mil higher than yeah. the deck itself. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Yeah. So I tipped up the inside a bit better, so we don't get all dusty inside. Now I'm gonna clean up the slip and make a nice space for me to weld. Now that we got a filler, time to bolt the hitch 
for the pod site tank on. So Burke's going through and fitted the second hatch. He's talked all of those bogs up and we are ready to start filling that tank up as well. So time to get some water in there. So we're filling the second tank in the coffer dam. And I want to show you something I've just seen on the first tank. We've been running on this tank for uh, about 12 days now. Um, so, and we're about halfway through that one tank. So I just want to show you this really cool little thing I just saw with the water level. So you can see the water that we've got. That's the surface level of the water itself. Underwater, above water. But if you look pretty closely, you might be able to see tiny little bubbles sitting under the surface of the water. And on the top of the water, they're there, but you hardly see them compared to under the water. It's really quite cool. So water's pouring into the second tank quite well. So we need to empty the second water tank, so we've got a bung buried down in there. Vic's going to undo that with the big spanner. We've got a little water dam set up. I'll show you the whole shimozzle. So we're going to dump it into this so that it loses all of its power and it just starts to flow over with gravity. It's going to come down here and then we've made a little bit of a trail all the way along here. I'm trying to keep it away from the neighbour's boat. It's going to come down here. There's like a depression in the ground here with a lump on this side. Gravity will always take it this way. And then obviously out here and just off out into the yard where there's some drains and stuff it can go into. So we've done it before with the last tank and this system worked pretty well. Might just tidy this little bit up here but I think we're ready to go pretty much. So we need to get this chock fast in. It's arriving tomorrow. We've made a bunch of templates. I'm gonna put them onto some aluminium and then show you how that works to make a dam around our engine mounts to pour this epoxy chock fast. But that's next week. Thanks for watching.